Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another quick pick prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the heavyweight bout between Marcos Raguero de Lima versus Justin Taffa. And how I feel about this one right here is I'm going low confidence um, Marcos Raguero de Lima to beat Justin Taffa. Yeah, low confidence here. Um, Justin Taffa it seemed like, you know, he was a decent lean. I mean, he's still a dog. So, you know, betting wise, I guess, you know, it wouldn't hurt to throw money on him in a fight that seems... 50 50 yard. It seemed like, you know, you can't trust anyone. So, like, you go with a guy who, I think he's like plus 154. At first, I thought he was going to be the favorite, but, you know, shift, stuff might shift. So, who knows? Money might come in. I can easily stand it shifted to, to um, Raguero de Lima being the dog. But, um, yeah, it's just, that's one, it's just one of those fights. That's all it is. Just one of those fights. Um, just Topper really hasn't beaten anyone that good just yet. He beat Parker Porter. That's probably the best one he got in the first round. He doesn't really look good beyond the first round, to be honest, in none of his fights. He made Jared Vanderbilt look like a world-class striker not too long ago. Well, not as long ago as I would want it to be if I was betting him. <laughs> yeah, he made Jared Vanderbilt look like a world-class striker. Like he couldn't find a shot. Jared Vanderbilt was jabbing him up. He was missing and hitting air and just looking lost and desperate and getting picked apart against his nose bust, his lip bust and leaking. Nose blood leaking into his mouth. Like he didn't dog by Jared Vanderbilt, making Vanderbilt look like a world beater. And that's not a good look. And, um, yeah. So outside of Parker Porter, who was kind of already chinny, you know, he's pretty much beating guys that he should beat. And even his fight, last fight, you know, he knocked um, that former football player out. But in the first fight they had, he was looking good. It was in the, off to a good start. You know, he was couldn't find his range with him early in that first that first fight. And it ended because it was like, I think like a nut kick or something. So the fight ended early. Or, no, I think it was an eye poke. And then he was able to, you know, train for him some more. And then he was able to do what he should have did to him the first time. But the first time, it was looking good. So, so far, I haven't really been, I'm still not super impressed by Justin Toffa. He seemingly has this momentum, but he hasn't really produced. This will be by far the biggest fight. And if he does win, the biggest win. And he hasn't been able to do nothing out of the first round. And at one point, that was Marcus Raguerre de Lima as well to some extent. Even though even back then, Marcus Raguerre de Lima still was doing more than Justin Toffa is now to some extent. He still was kind of like the guy that, Weak gas tank, choke artist, um, one round fighter, but we have seen him in fights, even in losses, like look good beyond the first round or look better and stronger in the final first round. We have been able to see him he'd be able to go the distance with some guys, be able to knock people out in the second round, be able to do this, be able to do that. And I've been to see that maturity from him where the just how I still haven't seen him beyond look good beyond the first round. I've seen that from Marcus Rodriguez, Gary Delima. They both got big power. So I'm going to leave Marcus Raguero de Lima. I think it's going to turn out to be one of these like ugly heavyweight fights where they kind of don't heat in the first round, probably both tagging each other, both kind of wobbling and coming back and swinging like a slop fest type fight. But then his fight starts to wear on, you know, especially when the Lima gets hurt. The Lima also, another thing, the Lima has, can grapple. We see him take down what, like a Sambo world champion and what's his name? The guy who beat Fado in the grapple, I forget his name, but Blagoy Ivano, I think he took him down like twice. Yes, it was late in the fight. Yes, it was unexpected, but still, he was able to take him down twice. And Justin Toffa and his brother and that whole family literally got like no grappling or nothing. So I think he could, he could sneak some takedowns in there. Probably not going to do a good job to get back to his feet. So he probably could just lay his, put his belly on him. He probably could hold him down for three minutes. Literally no technique at all. Just put your belly on top of him. Probably hold him down for three minutes. You know, that's going to be crucial in a fight that might, while well, I'm predicting, go to decision. And also suck the life out of a guy so that, you know, the power not there as much. And turn the fight into a slot fest, which I, you know, a extended slot fest, which will favor the guy who has experience in a extended slot fest, like um, um, Marcus Vargas de Lima. When the power's not there, you got to swing with arm punches and stuff, and it's throwing your body weight without really that twist, that pop, that snap to it. That fluidity is just kind of this labor and it's thrown out there. I think that will favor Marcus Vargas de Lima in the stretch. And again, Justin Topper hasn't really shown the ability to look good beyond the first round. He's just been a first round fighter. So it's kind of like first round or bust for. Tafa in this one, but it's not a first round of bust for Delima. And also, Delima is more around it, more comp, more experience. So, I'm going to lean to Delima. Low confidence. I think he'll be able to extend him out the first round, mix in some takedowns, and win the war of attrition. So, in this one, I got Marcos Raguerio Delima via decision.